Hello everyone, thanks for joining. Today we're going to build a simple power app that demonstrates the variations of the new print function and we're going to develop this app through the Teams interface. So let's get started. To create the app in Teams, we first need to make sure that the Power App tile has been added to Teams. If not, we can click the three dots and add the Power Apps tile. Clicking the Power Apps tile takes us to the main Power Apps dashboard, uh, which you can see here. Uh, it shows you an inventory of the things that have been added in Power Apps so far. To develop our app, we're going to click on Build which then takes you to this view, uh, which shows um, the inventory of objects for a given team. On the left here, we see teams that I'm a member of that I can develop in, and on the right, you see the inventory. So for this demo, we're gonna stick with the print demo team. And then we're going to click see all at the bottom here, uh, which takes us to a more um, structured view of the components that have been created in this team. So first, uh, we want to create our table. Um, creating the table before we create the Power App uh, saves us a little bit of time when associating the data source with the Power App. So let's go ahead and create a new table. Uh, the way to do that is you click the new button here and we then select table. Uh, we can name it whatever we want. Uh, in this case, I'm going to call it leave request uh, two since I already created um, the table we're gonna be using, uh, but I wanted to show you the interface here. Um, so you select a display name, Teams generates a plural display name, which you can change. And one thing to note is that a primary name column will always be generated. This, the display name is also customizable, but this column cannot be deleted and its data type will always be text. So once you're done naming your table, you click create, which generates the table for you. And then it takes you to this view over here. When you get to this view, all you need to do to add columns is click the add column button. You then pick a display name for your column and you also pick the data type. The interface is pretty intuitive, not, not many changes from the web version of Power Apps. The one thing I would like to note is for people picker uh, types, that data type does not exist here in this, in this dropdown. What you can do is you set it up as a lookup data type and you simply pick the user table to look up into and that creates a people picker. Um, and another thing I wanted to know is for choice data types, if creating a choice data field, if there isn't already a choice that you would like, you can always click new choice and add as many choices as you want. In this case, we will use a choice field that I've created, which, which uh, looks like this. These are the options and that's what we'll be using in our app. Once you are done creating all of your custom columns, you simply click save table at the bottom, and then we can move on to creating our Power App. To create the Power App, we get out of our table, so let's just go back to all, and you, we go back to the new button, we click Canvas App, and then you choose your layout. Uh, for this demo, I'll be choosing the, the tablet. Once the app is generated, you just name it. So I'm naming it leave requests and clicking save. Once the app is generated, you can see here that it also generates some containers for us. And these containers have a gallery and also a form over here, which is a pretty nice feature because it'll save us a little bit of time when we're customizing our print screens. 
So let's go back over here to data. And instead of creating a new table, since we've already created it, we can just click add data and pick our table that we created. This then hooks up our data source to the form and the gallery that we have here, which again, like I mentioned before, saves us a little bit of time. Now, what we need to do next is set up our printing screens. We're gonna set up the landing page with a gallery that will be printable in landscape mode. And we're also gonna set up a portrait screen for printing a single request. So you'll notice when we add a new screen in scenarios, if you scroll to the bottom, there are now two templates for printing. So I'm gonna select our landing page and I'm also gonna select our detail page. And I'm gonna rename these. One thing to note here is that the print screen templates don't bring in any other objects other than the, the print button. What the print button does on select is it simply calls the print function. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna customize these screens and I'm gonna add some icons to, instead of this button, to print the screen. And before I do that, I am going to simply move the form and the gallery to the new printing screens that we made. Now I'm going to uh, customize and format these two screens to match the format that I want to be printed. And then I'll show you what the final result is. You can see I added a few icons to edit and view each item. Also an icon to um, create a new item. Um, but what we're really interested in here is the print functionality. Before I show you that, one thing to note is that the print function prints exactly what is visible on the screen. If you want things to show on the screen in the app that you do not want to be printed, there is a very simple way to achieve that. For example, in this view here, um, I don't really want to print the, the navigational items at the top because that's not really something I need to report on. So what I can do is I can select all of the items that I do not want to be printed, which in this case are these here in this bar. Um, and I can go to their visible property. Simply setting it to the inverse of parent.printing uh, momentarily hides these objects while the screen is, is printing and then displays them again once the screen is finished printing. So to preview this, I'm going to show you what it's like to use the print function. So over here on the landing page, um, I want to print the list of my existing leave requests and I will click the print button and just tell it to print a PDF. And, and this is what the printed page looks like. Um, as you can see, the navigational items at the top that we um, hid during the printing process are not actually printed with the page. Going back to the app, um, if I want to, for instance, print a single request, uh, as in a details view. This is um, where I set up the, the portrait template. Um, so in this case, if we click the printing button here, 
we should see this view without the navigational items as well. And there it is. So we've printed this portrait screen with a, view, a detailed view of the item. And once again, the, the menu at the top is invisible. So that's a simple and quick way that you can set up printable screens and power apps. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.